So this is Timmy. All right, and my friend Timmy collapses. We're hanging out together. Suddenly he falls down. His eyes are closed, all right? Um, and that's not right. He doesn't normally pass out, so I'm worried. The very first thing I'm going to do, you guys, is try to wake him up, right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Sometimes people just pass out. Sometimes they are get a little dizzy, their knees are locked. There are lots of reasons that people pass out. We don't want to do CPR on everybody, okay? So I'm going to do that gently initially, Timmy. All right, but if that doesn't work, I'm going to do what we call tap and shout. Open hands, okay? Open hands don't hurt anybody. We're never going to use fists. Fists hurt, open hands don't. All of you know that we don't like to touch people in an aggressive way, right? We don't want to hurt other people. If they're passed out and we're trying to wake them up, open hands isn't going to hurt them, but we're going to be kind of rough because if they're awake or if they can wake up, we want them to. We don't want to start chest compressions unless they need it. So what that looks like, <coughs> Timmy, Timmy, wake up. Looks kind of aggressive, right? That's okay. We want him to wake up if he's able to wake up, all right? So we're only going to do this if somebody is passed out, collapsed, right? Okay, so once I've done that, Timmy's not waking up in this case, so can anybody raise your hand to tell me what I would do next? We go like that. No. You would check if he was crazy. No, I'm only, the only check I'm going to do on Timmy is actually try to wake him up. If I can't wake him up, I'm going to move on to the next step. I am going to call 911, okay? I know I am 911 today, but uh, if I were home or if I were in the public, I would call 911 too. All right, if you're home alone, this is really easy to do. Um, if you're using your parent's cell phone and it's a lock, um, every cell phone has an emergency screen that you can get to. If you don't know how to get to that on your parent's phone, um, then go ahead and ask them when you get home how to do that. If you have a home phone, you can call 911. If you have some kind of assistant, like Alexa, Siri, Google Assist, um, any of those, they can call 911 for you. The great thing about that, you can do it hands-free. So you can say, okay, Google, call 911, and it will say, would you like me to call 911? Yes, they're gonna call our dispatchers for you. Once you have 911 on the line, they're going to walk you through everything, but they're going to ask you a lot of questions. But it's not a test. If you don't know the answer, just say, I don't know. All right? They're very friendly. They're all trained to help you. So if you don't know what to do, if you forget everything I teach you today, our 911 dispatchers are going to tell you how to do this over the phone and they will remind you, okay? Um, they are there to help and it's very, very important, the number one thing, to make sure that help is on the way, okay? CPR is exhausting. It's really tiring, all right? So you wanna make sure that we're getting there as fast as we can so that we can take over, all right? So if you are not alone, and this is really important, so I want everybody to use good listening skills while I'm saying this. If you're in a group, a big group like this, or even a group of three people or two people. Very important, don't just yell out, somebody call 911, because he'll think that he called 911, he'll think that she called 911, she'll think that she called 911, nobody's going to call, okay? Calling 911 is kind of stressful, right? People don't want that responsibility. So it's very important that you designate somebody to do that for you. You, call 911, all right? See, I pointed at him, I made eye contact, he made eye contact back, so he was acknowledging me. I knew he was going to do what I asked him to do. Okay, that step, very, very important because you want to make sure that we're on the way, all right? Um, the other thing that I'm going to ask for is an AED if I'm in a public area, okay? Can everybody say that with me? AED. -E I will explain to you what that is in a few minutes, okay? I have somebody who knows what it is and it's great and you guys actually have one here in the school. Um, but once I've done that, if you can hear my voice, hands up. Hands on your head, hands on your shoulders, hands on the floor, and mouths quiet. Thanks, guys. Um, once you've got that done, and all of that takes about two seconds. Wake up. Timmy, wake up. You, call 911. Get me an AED. That was really fast, right? That took me like 10 seconds. There's not going to be a nurse. All right. There won't be a nurse. Well, there might if it happened in the school, but still. Um, you have a whole lot of people that can help you, okay? Once I've done all those steps, took me about 10 seconds. I'm going to take this flat part of my palm. I'm going to start doing hands only. I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. See this fatty part of your palm right here? That's the strongest yeah. part of your hand. That's the strongest part of your hand. That's right. So that is the part I want to set in the middle of the chest on a bone called your sternum. And you can feel your own sternum. It's right in the center of your chest. Okay. You want it right in the middle. And you want this piece. Okay. You don't want your fingertips on the center of your chest. You want that really strong 
part of your hand on the center of the chest. I'm gonna put my other hand over top, I'm gonna interlace my fingers, and I'm gonna press down hard and fast. And I want you guys to tell me, do you guys think I'm doing Lub Dub for Timmy right now? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I hear a lot of no's and the no's are correct in this case. All right, so it's very important that I use my body weight to do this, all right? Yeah. My arms aren't super strong. I've got plenty of body weight, okay? So I am going to put that hand down, I'm going to interlace my fingers. If this feels really uncomfortable for you, you can do this. But if you find that your hand is slipping down, go ahead and interlace those fingers and just deal with the pain, okay? Um, and then I'm going to do what's pushing down hard and fast. I'm gonna keep my shoulder over my wrist. I'm gonna keep my elbow straight. It looks like this. Oh, that was cool. Right? Hey. Kind of intense, right? Okay, couple of things. I don't wanna see anybody bending their elbow. It's kind of a natural movement. You guys all probably do a lot of push-ups in gym class, right? No, no. I'm gonna show you what happens when I bend my elbows. It hit him in the face. I'm, I'm getting a workout. <laughs> but Timmy's heart is definitely not being helped, okay? One other thing that I don't wanna see when we're doing this, <laughs> there's always one. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, no, there's always one person if I don't say it. Who will, who will do that? Um, your hands need to stay on the chest the whole time. So you never lift your hands. You just release your body weight and his chest will recoil every time. When I say hard, for all of you guys, as hard as you possibly can, you're going to push down. Okay, and when I say fast, about 100 to 120 beats per minute. I don't know if you like this song or not, and I'm sorry if you don't, but Baby Shark is a great song to sing while you're doing CPR. That will help you with the rhythm. Baby Shark, do-do-do-do-do-do. Baby Shark, do-do-do-do-do. Baby Shark. <laughs> 